हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट द इंटीरियर ऑफ द स्कल सो व्हेन यू विल हैव द स्कल नाउ दिस इज द कैप ऑफ द स्कल एंड यू हैव दिस कंप्लीट स्कल नाउ व्हेन यू विल कट दिस कैप ऑफ द स्कल एंड व्हेन यू विल ओपन दिस यू आर एबल टू सी द इंटीरियर ऑफ क्रेनियल कैविटी नाउ यू हैव द क्वेश्चन अबाउट दिस इंटीरियर ऑफ द कैप ऑफ स्कल as well as interior of this floor of the cranial cavity so what are the features you will find in this interior of the cap of the skull now first you have to understand that when you will see this cap if you will see the border now this border is showing multiple perforations it is a spongy appearance can you see this spongy appearance of the border now this is known as double table so it is outer table of the skull bone this is the inner table of skull bone that means when you will see the skull bone it is having the two layers of the bone and in the middle portion there is a vascular tissue is present now this double table arrangement is the characteristic feature of uh, mature skull in the fetal skull there is no double table arrangement so this is the question of your exam that outer table and inner table of the skull bone is a feature of adult skull not the fetal skull now the next part which you are able to see here is that you can see that i have removed this cap like this so this is the anterior portion of the cranial cavity so this is the anterior part of your this cap now on the outer side we have seen in the norma verticalis the sutures this is your frontal bone this is a parietal bone and posteriorly is the occipital bone so you will have coronal suture you will have sagittal suture you will have lambdoid suture in the same way when you will see inside you can appreciate this is your coronal suture midline sagittal suture and here is the your lambdoid suture but the important thing which is commonly asked as a question in the interior of the cap is that there are multiple foramens are visible can you see these are now these are not through and through foramens these are the depressions actually and these multiple uh, depressions or you can say the foramen like appearances are formed by the arachnoid granulations and these are known as granular foveoli what is that granular foveoli and the granular foveoli are more prominent and more in number in case of old skull so when you will have the skull of a old patient or a old person you will find more number of these appearances which are less in a adult skull apart from that inside that you can see that there are multiple lines are visible on both the side these lines are nothing but these are the vascular marking and these markings are produced by the middle meningeal vessels which you can appreciate here this is one and on the side also you can see the so these markings are produced by the middle meningeal vessels these are known as vascular marking now there is one more important thing is that when you will see this cap inside the cap you are able to appreciate a groove now this groove is present in the midline this midline groove is known as the groove for superior sagittal sinus it is the groove for superior sagittal sinus and the margins of the superior sagittal sinus will give attachment to a fold of dura mater is known as fox cerebri the fold is fox cerebri and between the two fold you are having a dural venous sinus that is known as superior sagittal sinus clear now on the anterior end you will have a small portion of the frontal crest which may be present may not be present so in nutshell whenever you are having this cap in your hand what are the questions you may have in exam first is that there is outer and inner plate arrangement and between them you have the vascular tissue these are the vascular markings which are visible inside then you will have these pits which are known as arachnoid pits depression which are known as granular foveoli then you will have this sulcus for the superior sagittal sinus and then the important thing is that you have to appreciate the 
sutures which are present on outer side as well as you can see from inside now we'll move to the interior of your cranial cavity now this is the cranial cavity now when you will see the interior of the cranial cavity you have to understand first that this is the whole area divided into the three part anterior cranial fossa middle cranial fossa and posterior cranial fossa so for the study purpose first i will tell you the structures from anterior to posterior in midline so when you will start from the first anteriorly now this is the your frontal crest now you can appreciate the frontal crest is here it is a very sharp crest if you can you want to feel you can feel in the skull it is a very sharp crest now just behind the frontal crest you will find a projection this projection is known as crista galli the projection is known as crista galli now between the crista galli and the frontal crest if i will make it more closer to this you can see there is a small foramen now this foramen between the frontal crest and crista galli is known as foramen cecum so frontal crest foramen cecum crista galli and adjacent to the crista galli is cribriform plate now behind the cribriform plate you have the part of the body of sphenoid which is known as zugum sphenoidal this is known as zugum sphenoidal now behind the zugum sphenoidal you are having a sulcus this is known as sulcus chiasmatis sulcus chiasmatis clear so what are the structures i told you frontal crest foramen cecum crista galli cribriform plate zugum sphenoidal sulcus chiasmatis now <clears throat> my dear students if you will go just behind the sulcus chiasmatis you will find a elevation now this elevation i am talking about this elevation this elevation lies just anterior to this depression now this depression in the midline is known as pituitary fossa this depression is pituitary fossa or the fossa for pituitary gland or hypophyseal fossa so this hypophyseal fossa is having a anterior elevation now this elevation clear this elevation is known as tuberculum cella this elevation is known as tuberculum cella now behind this hypophyseal fossa you are able to see this square bony plate now this square bony plate is known as dorsum cella now behind the dorsum cella you are having a slope now this slope is known as clivus which is formed by the base occiput and body of sphenoid bone then behind the clivus you will have foramen magnum now when you will go posteriorly in the posterior cranial fossa you are having a depression here you can see this area this is known as vermian fossa what is that vermian fossa now behind the vermian fossa you will have this line it is known as internal occipital crest internal occipital crest and this projection is known as internal occipital protuberance it is known as internal occipital protuberance so again we will revise the things in the midline first so starting from anteriorly frontal crest then foramen cecum then crista galli cribriform plate zugum sphenoidal sulcus chiasmatis then tuberculum cella pituitary fossa dorsum cella clivus foramen magnum vermian fossa this is vermian fossa then internal occipital crest and internal occipital protuberance so in this way you have to first understand the midline structures in the interior of cranial cavity now what are the lateral important landmarks which you should know these are the two orbital plates now these orbital plates separate the anterior cranial fossa from the orbit so this is the orbit so this orbit is separated from the cranial cavity with the help of this plate which is a part of frontal bone and i told you that this is the body of sphenoid anterior part is known as zugum sphenoidal and when you will go posteriorly you can see that these are the lesser wings of sphenoid 
and these lesser wing of sphenoid ends with a projection and these projections are known as anterior clinoid process what is this this projection is known as anterior clinoid process so this is anterior clinoid process now you have to come for the tuberculum cella now this tuberculum cella is having two end right end and the left end and these right and left points of the tuberculum cella are known as mi middle clinoid process so these are the anterior clinoid process and these points are the middle clinoid process in the same way this is your dorsum cella now these two points of the dorsum cella are known as posterior clinoid process so there are three clinoid process anterior clinoid process which are the medial end of the lesser wing of sphenoid posteriorly then you have tuberculum cella then you will have this posterior clinoid process which are the part of dorsum cella clear on the side here what bony features you are able to see here this is the superior orbital fissure this is the superior orbital fissure which is visible below the lesser wing of sphenoid and here you can see this is the optic canal clear so between the two optic canal you are having this sulcus chiasmatis but this sulcus chiasmatis is a misnomer because it has no relation with the optic chiasma then here there is a horizontally placed foramen now this horizontally placed foramen is known as foramen rotundum now this is a question for your exam that which foramen of cranial cavity does not open in the norma basalis so one of the example is foramen rotundum now this foramen rotundum opens in the terigo palatine fossa so this is the foramen rotundum then you will have foramen oval and behind the foramen oval this is foramen spinosum so how to remember this r o s ros r for rotundum o for oval s for spinosum now from the foramen spinosum you can trace that there is a two vascular markings are going now this vascular marking is the frontal branch of the meningeal vessel and this is the parietal branch of meningeal vessel clear then what are the another important bony features you are able to see this is the temporal bone this is the petrous part of the temporal bone in this petrous part of the temporal bone when you will see the apex so this is the apex of the petrous part of temporal bone and near the apex of petrous part of temporal bone you will have a depression now this depression is known as trigeminal cave now this trigeminal cave consists trigeminal ganglia now this bony part is actually known as a tegmen tympani so here you will find elevation now this elevation of the bone is known as arcuate eminence and this arcuate eminence or the elevation is produced due to the underlying inner ear semicircular canal and particularly superior semicircular canal of inner ear produces this bony prominence is known as arcuate eminence clear so these are the some important thing which you have to understand now on the side of your this body of sphenoid here you will have the sulcus or the groove that is for the carot internal carotid artery and this then in the posterior cranial fossa if you will go you will find the two transversely placed sulcus now here you can see that this is one side sulcus this is another side sulcus so these are known as transverse groove for the corresponding transverse dural venous sinuses now all the dural venous sinuses meet at this internal occipital protuberance that's why this point is known as confluence of sinuses confluence means meeting point now below this transverse groove you will have this infratentorial portion of the posterior cranial fossa in this i told you that this is the internal occipital crest and below that you will have this vermian fossa clear now in this posterior cranial fossa what foramen you will have this is the internal acoustic meatus then this is the jugular canal and then you are having the anterior condylar canal or hypoglossal canal so this is the hypoglossal canal clear so these are the 
important bony features of the interior of the cranial cavity i am again revising them this is the frontal crest then foramen cecum then crista galli cribriform plate orbital plates zugum sphenoidal lesser wing of sphenoid lesser wing will end at the anterior clinoid process this is sulcus chiasmatic behind the sulcus chiasmatic this is tuberculum cella the ends of the tuberculum cella are known as middle clinoid process then you will have hypophyseal fossa behind the hypophyseal fossa you will have a square plate of bone is known as dorsum cella the ends of the dorsum cella are known as posterior clinoid process tuberculum cella pituitary fossa and dorsum cella combinedly known as cella tarsica then here this is your foramen oval anterior to the oval you have foramen rotundum which is a horizontal foramen and behind the oval you have foramen spinosum from the foramen spinosum you are having the vascular markings which are coming from the meningeal vessels then behind this dorsum cella you will have the clivus clivus will go into the foramen magnum then what is the posterior side when you will approach posteriorly in the posterior part you will have inter internal occipital protuberance below that internal occipital crest and this is vermian fossa when you will talk about the foramen in the posterior cranial fossa this is your internal acoustic meatus and this is your jugular canal and this is anterior condylar canal or hypoglossal canal in the middle cranial fossa you have one more bony feature this elevation is known as arcuate eminence and here is the depression is for the trigeminal ganglia which is known as trigeminal cave clear so these are the important bony features present in the interior of cranial cavity thank you